So in the overview of Jeremy Bach, the metronome marks, comparing his metronome marks to nine performances and see what we can learn about our beloved team, whole beat or single beat, we are now entering or uh, arriving at number seven, which will be a very interesting episode. I can promise you that. Um, if you haven't seen the other uh, uh, videos of this series, just go to number one or number four. Both have quite an extensive introduction. The link is in the description box. We're going to dive right away into this invention and doing something different. So not showing you first the score or the performances. I'm going to share you, well, the score you can see, it's this one. Um, probably you all know the score, it's the E minor. But um, we're going to, I'm going to share with you first the, the overview of, at least as if my computer wants to react, what the um, result will be. And I'm showing you that because this is a very interesting case and it's, it's good, I think, to know that before we share the performances together. So here, 54% on average. So that's including Glenn Gold and Lizitza. We're playing at 80 and 88 percent but you see also on the other side andra Schiff at 32 percent so that's of course if journey is to be regarded at a single beat in whole beat that would be like considerably slower than whole beat eh? i'm number two here 35 percent copan 39 and then you have three people who all are like say on whole beat journey and 61, and then we have, of course, Lizitza. You know, Lizitza is um, making the disclaimer that she is uh, trying to play the pieces as fast as she can, which is, of course, for this series like gold. Because if Lizitza ends up 88% and Jenny writes these pieces for beginners, easy pieces, he say, technically, and he writes 138 something that's out of reach for even Lizitza, then we have a problem, I think, right? But this is a pretty stunning overview. So the, the, the majority of the performances here are whole bit or slower. And so without further ado, let me give you the overview right now so you can listen to it yourself. So before we going to talk about this a little bit more, I want to sh I want to show you the screen, the the the, the metronome mark again. For those of you who are tempo, tempo junkies, and I know all of you are, 138 is of course a magical number. It's the Hammerklavier Sonata first movement tempo, but there you have a half note, here you have quarter note, here you have sixteenth notes as a basis, and the Hammerklavier Sonata are the eighth notes basis. Allegro Vivace was original 
also was Allegro, Molto Allegro Vivace, I think was the original tempo description that Beethoven gave. He crossed the, uh, the Vivace out, but left the metronome mark. And that's, of course, I mean, with, again, this video is not about the Hammer Clavier Sonata. For me, that's the reason why people like Moschlis were confused, because they, saw, they only saw the Allegro and they saw the 138. And Moschlis rightfully said, like, 138 will will make this piece into a presto, which Allegri Vivace is very close to presto. So if you just put the pieces together in the context, everything makes sense suddenly. But here, the 138 Allegro Vivace is very interesting. The comparison with the Hammerklavier is here, like, uh, is there. You wouldn't say that. Bach invention, journey metronomization, you go immediately to the... Uh, Hammerklavier Sonata. The question now, of course, is what is the correct tempo? And again, this series is not about that. We are here only to learn to what can we say about a metronome arc. But here in the notation, just because I'm touching on that upon that briefly, I know many of you ask me to do that. So here you have common time 16th notes, which is uh, a very normal notation, though you have all this ornamentation. Well, Czerny uses a kind of ornamentation here, and I say a kind of ornamentation. It, the ornamentations and the ornaments in the inventions have a pretty, pretty complex history. I've made a video about that years ago. I will try to search for it and link it in the description box or here on screen, where I give the overview of the of the sources we have, and also you will see that not, that that. Uh, um, uh, ornamentation in the invention is inventions is pretty complex. You have to basically make your own score. Even if you go to an urtext score, also they have to give like an option. Um, so here, but Czerny gives these ornaments here, and they are to our. I mean, they're pretty normal. I mean, I I wouldn't say that Czerny does crazy things here. Uh, it, I'm just saying you have more than one option with the inventions. And we actually don't know really how Bach meant the pieces to be played. And if I remember well, there's even um, an idea, maybe it makes sense that Bach left these ornaments to be played or added by the students. And then later sources that we have are oftentimes copies of the inventions by students who got the permission to copy it when they started with Bach or they just bought the score. I mean, those days were different than ours, guys. So, and of course, when we have students copies of Bach and with added ornamentation is unbelievable. It's gold material because that comes directly from Bach's practice. And so there is a lot of interesting things to say about ornamentations in the inventions. But again, this is not about that. But the ornaments do add a certain weight to the notation. Um, it's, it's, it's very different when you would play this piece without those ornaments. For instance, you have here this mordant on the fourth beat which gives an additional weight to the fourth beat, you might say, like, that's not so much. No, okay, maybe not. It's up to you. That's a taste of the, comp of, the, of the composer, of the performer. But how much weight do you give on the fourth beat? Because if you give a little bit more, in any case, you have to give a little bit more than normal, then you give this fourth beat more attention than structurally or grammatically, I would say, is... Um, to be given from its position in the normal common time, where the first and the third beat needs an accentuation. The first a lot, the third a little bit less, but the two and four actually not. So Bach giving a, an ornament or someone in Bach's circle, like, yeah, and ornamentation is complex, I just said that, but the ornament, Jenny gave it, the ornament on the fourth beat adds weight to the fourth beat, which is not very common in this time type of time signature. So it drags the tempo a little bit. It's also understandable because it's a pretty dramatic mood. I mean, this is not a very lively piece. If you hear Glenn Gold and Lizitsa play, they play it like with a smile, like, this is just a toccata. And of course, they have all the right to do that. But I think you can say that the character of the piece here uh, um, doesn't indicate that. And the ornaments actually go hand in hand with that. Also, this trill on the first beat here, uh, which is an eighth note. So in, in one quarter beat or quarter note, you have to give an ornamentation and then 
probably make a little bit of an articulation to have this motif clear. Then you have again this jump as an octave, all these intervals in that music and that actually goes just straight on into the early 19th century. This should be very cantabile. It's a singing culture. By the way, the inventions in Bach's preface is like to learn the cantabile style. So if you just go back and listen to Gold and Lizitza, if you have this as an octave like papam, that's, at least according to me, not what this notation suggests. So, as always, I know you're waiting now to just hear the, the comparison between single beats and whole beats. <laughs> Sorry for the last note uh, to have been cut off, but guys, do, I mean, everyone who listens to this single beat version of this piece will be in shock. Like, this is un impossible. What was Jenny thinking, of course, for us here? This is one of the major, no, it's not a major proof for whole beat. It's just a contextual thing. Like, if you put all the inventions in a row, you see the preface of Jenny. It's for easy, it's for beginners. It's easy pieces. He collects also the, the small preludes there. And you see the performances, nine performances. Again, it's like a, even a selection, I would say, to with fast players then what else can you say? You have this result. It's not the, it's not the main argument for whole beat, but it's like, like it's just like opening a window and showing you what the result would be or what the world would look like if single beat was really something that existed on this large of a scale as people today just think it was. And so you, you, you enter the field of the inventions where we don't have this hammer clavier expectation and then suddenly you see hear a piece like this and you say what's happening here this is not possible but you have to keep in mind that what 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 is like um how do you say that in english what's what is really like impossible to accept here in terms of speed is something that we take just for granted when we go a few years later when you play a mozart sonata I mean, I'm not saying you have these 16th notes here at played in that speed, but it's not, it's not much slower. If you go to Beethoven, Hammerklavier, I mean, Hammerklavier Fuchs 144, it's even faster than this. Huh? And I would say a little bit more complex. So if this is something that offends people like, this is not possible. What was Sharon thinking? The idiot. Yeah, probably he wasn't thinking that. And probably Beethoven wasn't thinking that either, what we tried to play there. And so the comparison, don't let anyone fool you. The comparison between this Czerny Bach edition and the Beethoven, let's say the Hammerklavier Sonata or the symphonies, it doesn't matter all the, you, it, 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 I take just the Hammerklavier Sonata as an example, is one on one. It's Karl Czerny who gives in the same system metronome marks for these works as Beethoven and he gave metronome marks for Beethoven's works. So if this here doesn't make any sense to you, then the other side shouldn't make any sense to you either. It's just we're, we're used to so much faster performances than this for such a long time that we forget to think that also in the Hammerklavier view, we should hear every note, individually quality of every note, give individual quality to every note. Of course. But we forgot that because we're so used to that and we're still trapped in this like idea of virtuosity and like the Hammerklavier Sonata, Beethoven wrote somewhere in a letter that people will, this sonata will keep people busy for 50 years. Yes, but not be because of like, they have to learn to play the right notes. No, it's this, it's this sonata's 
atmosphere, construction, harmony, harmony. It's like a Wagner sonata, certainly the middle part. Have you ever looked at this sonata from that perspective and that language? That's what would keep people busy for 50 years. We are still struggling with the Hamaklavai sonata 200 years later. That was not what Beethoven meant. Anyways, the point being is, compare Czernibach with all the metronome marks you have in the early 19th century and in, in like the early half of the entire 19th century. And you see that there is something wrong. If single beat was really something that existed, but you know, I don't believe in that because we don't have anything to show statistically. We should be able to play all the metronome marks and I will give you like 5% of printing errors. That would be a lot, but um, then still it would be like a no-brainer that it's not possible. But if that single beat universe really would have existed, then Czerny meant all these beats in, 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 in Bach and Beethoven just played it like that. And Czerny's students who would be given this book with the small preludes and also the inventions in, in Vienna, 1825, young children just could do what Lizitsa today fails to do. Why? It's up to you to decide what's right or wrong here, but I think it's an eye-opener. And I will repeat that in every of the episodes. And if you are here following the entire series, um, you will say, Wim, I know the message, but you never know who is landing on these videos and when. So sometimes I have to repeat the points that for you probably make sense for a long time. Okay, guys, that was it for number seven. Up to number eight. If you haven't been subscribed to the channel, this is your first video. Welcome to the channel. Appreciate you being here. Subscribe to it, hit the bell, and then we see each other very soon again for other videos. Bye.